All right, well, as you saw, we broke a Burfield joint the last time we were out. And so today, I need to go ahead and get this thing fixed, get the new Burfield joint in so that I can get back out on the trails. Not only that, I can just enjoy this thing. The weather's getting nice here in Oklahoma and I would enjoy cruising this thing around town. So here we go. So as you might have seen, it's a little difficult. Spaces are a little bit tight. When you have limited space like I do in a little garage like this, that a project car that uh, is hard to move around, you really just try to do your best with what you've got. And so I've pushed this thing forward as far as I can so I can get that axle shaft back in here hopefully. But we'll be working in some tighter spaces today just trying to make sure everything work. And that way I wanna really make sure that this is parked where if I have to stop and take a break, get some parts, do whatever, I can still close my garage when I leave keep everything locked up nice and safe so you know just another day in the life of working in a two-car garage it's a lot easier when you're at home doing this got all the tools get to sit on a bucket it's really nice instead of rolling around in the dirt out on the trail I say that but we'll see if it actually goes that smooth this morning Well, as I'm getting this thing pulled apart, for all the viewers that are out there that are like really confused on why I have Toyota axles in a Jeep, you know, I got these on a, on a good deal. So they were already ready to go. The fronts actually were already set up to be bolted into this Jeep. So the rears, I just needed to weld on some new perches. They already had lockers front and rear. They're re-geared the 456s, which I felt was about perfect to run a 35 inch tire on this. And so, you know, overall it's like, okay, this will these will serve the purpose of what I need. Having them now, would I do it again? Again, I don't know. Knowing what I know, trying to find something that was a little bit more part store ready would be nice as well. Just, you know, to, if something like this broke, I'd go get something versus having to order and, you know, it ends the whole weekend. You know, if this would have been a, a Dana, if this would have been, you know, I keep saying, you know, but if this would have been a Dana 44 or something like that, that I could have just gone to the parts store, picked up what I needed, that would have worked really nicely. We could have been back on the trail, you know, before the weekend was over. You know, there's some pros and cons to having these. They're really strong. So I had to do a lot of research after breaking this to try to figure out what exactly I have. When I purchased them, they are FJ62 axles that have been shortened. The rear's been centered with a FJ80 center section. And so it's kind of just a little hodgepodge of a bunch of different Toyota parts. And so I finally have understood exactly what I have. I have FJ62 axle housings, front and rear, that are been narrowed or cut to FJ40 length. The front has an FJ80 Toyota center section, so it's a nine and a half inch ring gear. It has the FZJ, the electric locking actuator in the front. I actually broke the rear locker on the Rubicon a few years back. That has now been replaced with a ARB air locker in the rear. So they're supposed to have long field, burr field joints, which are the really strong ones apparently for these Toyotas in the front. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't even know if there's a way I could have told. It is what it is. I do know on these now, after getting everything pulled apart, they're just the stock shaft. So they're the 30 spline in the center, a 27 spline at the burr field, and then another 30 spline out, outer. In the last video too, I talked a little bit about go ahead and purchasing a second burr field joint. So that way I could just replace it on the trail in the future. I think I've just decided not to do that for now. And so what I've done is I actually ordered a replacement from Marlin Crawler to go ahead and get this back on the road. I'll go ahead and replace that. And I think what I'll end up doing maybe for Christmas or something, I'm probably not gonna get out wheeling a whole lot for the rest of the year. And so I'm not too worried about the longevity of these, but I think what I'll do is replace it with just the, the Marlin Crawler Burfield joint. They have a two year warranty on them. So if I break it again, you know, then I can ask myself some bigger questions as well, but I'm thinking I'll do that. And then at Christmas, I'll probably go ahead and order the 30 spline long field upgrades. So I'll get the full axle shafts, both sides, and then I'll pull these ones out and figure out a good way to kind of just store those or carry them with me on the trailer so that if something breaks on the trail again, I can just throw the new axle shaft in and be out and having a good time. So that's my plan on spares that I'll probably end up carrying in the future. What I'm gonna do with these for now, they're gonna get the Marlin crawler set up with the Burfield and then I will be getting new axle shafts on both sides with 30 splines, I think in the future, so. There you go, a little update and background on these axles. 
So this, this is the beauty of not keeping things the way they are supposed to be. So in addition to the completely custom axle setup that I currently have under here, I also wanted a wider track width. And so when I rebuilt the knuckles last year, there's a way that you can swap the hubs out for IFS hubs, which then gives you an extra inch and a half on each side. So an extra three inch track width. And then it allows you to have the, the drum rotor here that just go ahead and slides off versus being a press fit. Oop. So instead of being a press fit, you have a, a rotor that'll just slide off like that. You get the extra width, all those nice things, but then you also have to figure out how to make stuff work. And so then that makes this caliper here sit too close to that rotor. And so you actually have to get the perfect spacing of washers. You upgrade the hole here to a half inch bolt, and then you re-tap these to fit through. There's some really good write-ups online, um, some good YouTube videos out there that I watched to help do this. So if you're interested, I can help, I can link those. But uh, if you're a Toyota guy, you're probably familiar with this process. But you know, just the things you have to keep changing or keeping track of. So now it's in addition to everything else, it's making sure I keep the right number of spacers and washers to the right side for this caliper bolt. So there we go. Little tech tip for you there. Yeah. <laughs> If you also remember back on the other video, I ended up having to use a screwdriver and a hammer because I didn't have this particular socket. So this is really nice that I have this now, and this is a piece that will be getting added to my trail kit coming up. So if that's a video you'd like to see too, just kind of different tools I carry, whatever, make sure to comment below. I'll get a video posted about that if so. So here you go. Nice, nice oily, greasy nasty mess so we'll go ahead and repack those bearings clean this out really good too but yummy <laughs> so for those of you that don't know or are curious, the reason this happens is there's a seal that's right here, well, inside and outside. So way in there and there's one out here that the axle shaft seals up on and it keeps all the fluid in the middle, the differential fluid where it should be, and it keeps all the grease out here where it should be. Well, having taken that axle shaft and burr field out, everything's now become like a nice big mess. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. Okay, so I've never done this before, if I'm being honest. And so, you know, being on YouTube, I watched a few YouTubes. And uh, basically this clip is what's gonna secure the axle shaft into the burr field. But you can see it's a little bit large. It kind of fits kind of loosely. And so I've seen some people that take a zip tie and like suck it down with a zip tie. I saw another guy take one of these worm drive type deals and basically you just tighten it down. And so I'm gonna go that route and see if it works. But the idea here is that as you tighten this down, that clip will actually suck itself into that groove and everything's nice and secured. So then when I go to install the burr field, it'll, it'll kind of spline in, I'll tap it down and this will push back and then that clip will slide past and everything will lock in the way it needs to. And then you have your outer clip here that'll hold everything else in place on the outside. So basically I think this one keeps the axle shaft from sliding, sliding too far in to the differential and this one keeps it from sliding too far out. And so there's that. And then what I've got here, it's like opening it up at Christmas time. I've got the Marlin Crawler Burfield joint. So what I need to do with this, we need to grease it up really well. See, nice and pretty. So. This is all I have left of the old one, but you can see that was what was in there. And this is all the pieces that broke and shattered into a million pieces. But what I need to do is go ahead and fill this with grease. This will slide on, we'll tap it on, boom, boom, boom. Slide the axle shaft in, put everything back together, and then it should be good to go. So next step, I need to go ahead and get this greased up. What I saw online, again, as I said, I've never done this before, so you're with me. And if you're watching and you're a Toyota expert, let me know if I'm an idiot for doing it this way. But what I saw online is basically take a big bag like this, you stuff this full of grease, cut the corner off, shove it down in the burr field, squeeze it, and it's gonna go ahead and pack all these ball bearings. So I'll go ahead and get that done as the next step. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Bacon a cake. Okay, 
So then I said do that. Let's push that down in there. So you can see, see how the grease now, when you push it down like that, it's bubbling up around these ball bearings here. So that's exactly what you want to happen. So you just got to squeeze it nice and good, put some pressure on it, and then it's going to fill that up and get around all of the goods. You need a heavier duty bag, that's for sure. Okay. So you can see, nice and packed in, got grease around everything. Nice and heavy, heavy duty. So now the splines should line up, hopefully, in theory. Should just be able to tap that down into place. Now, we'll go ahead and unscrew this collar, get that removed, and then uh, we should be good to go. Um, so it's a new day and I think the last little bit of video we got yesterday was me packing the burr field full of grease and then I know we took a break because I was having some issues getting that inner snap ring past the burr field so I had Caleb help me out to get that set which meant he set the camera down we didn't get that on video but it's now together it's a new day and I'm gonna go ahead and start reassembling this whole assembly. The first part getting this assembly back together looks like is this outer axle seal. So I did order a new one. The old one, it seemed a little bit loose. And so I just, you know, they're a couple bucks. It's good insurance. I just thought might as well order a new seal. So this will actually install right down in here. And so if you look, there's a little, little area back in here. So then this outer axle seal, that's gonna sit in there just like that. It is supposed to be a pretty tight fit. And so what I actually did is I fabricated a nice little piece of steel that I had sitting around. You can see axle seal pipe. I made sure to label it real nicely. And so what I'll do is I'll actually, let me go grab a hammer. That's the one thing I forgot real quick, but this piece of pipe, little cutout welded on the end. So then that fits nicely around this seal, just like that right there. You just give it a little tap. I'll go grab the hammers just so I can get it a little bit better, for, a little bit more force behind it, but then that'll just tap right in. So let me go grab a hammer. So now if you zoom in here, that'll just show you what the axle seal looks like, nice and sealed up, all ready to go. The next piece with this, so I kept the bag of grease that we had yesterday and I'm just gonna go ahead and squirt, get this filled up with grease. I've got more that we'll end up using. Mm, yummy. So I've got most of the grease already out that I had from loading the burr field, and so now I just need to pack this thing full of some more grease, and instead of doing it, you know, the easy way with my hands, I'm gonna go ahead and pump this up, get this, this knuckle nice and full of grease, so you can see grease in there it's all nice and loaded up we're gonna go ahead and run it around make sure the whole cavity gets a nice chunk of grease covered up fill those knuckles up with as much grease as you can get it everywhere and then with the axle that was attached you can see we got it all packed nice and full of grease as well we got everything snapped into place this will just slide in to that outer axle seal that we just installed until there it is so now you just kind of jiggle until there it goes so then that'll just slide in we've got knuckle cavity packed full of grease as you can see so and then we'll go ahead and when it's done i'll pull this filler off and i'll go ahead and fill that up even more with the grease excitement of attaching bolts and getting stuff put back together but we are on the home stretch here folks <music> 
So now that I've got this wheel bearing out already anyway, it's looking like it could use some grease. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pack this thing up, get some grease in those bearings. You can see it's starting to push all that old junk out, all that old oily, nasty grease. We'll put some fresh grease in here, get it looking pretty, get it working right. So just, you know, if you never pack bearings, it's just toss some on your palm. You can see as you just work it through, you're just kind of massaging it through there. Just getting all that old nastiness out, getting some nice fresh grease in its place. Hopefully this will help increase the longevity of these wheel bearings here. Okay, so now that wheel bearing's all nice and packed back up. So go through my hundredth set of gloves. So, over the years, like I mentioned yesterday, so if any of you have been following along, you know that this Jeep is a hodgepodge Buick motor, Chevy transmission, Jeep transfer case, Toyota axles, blah, blah, blah. But with that, it's also really difficult to remember all the parts and all the torque specs and all the things. So I actually have like a Google sheet here. So that's what I'm actually looking at right now. And so you can see the spindle nut, the way this is supposed to be done. We need to tighten it down to 43 foot pounds of torque and then back off to four pounds. So, and then the lock nut needs to be at 47 pounds on the outside. And so what I'm gonna do right now is go ahead and torque this down to the 43 pounds, torque it, back it off, re-tighten it, and then we should be good to go. I don't know if I need to do this again. So if you guys are more intelligent than me or know more, because it's very possible. I would love to know, do I need to retorque this every time or is it just the first time to get the races set on the bearings or you know, how does that kind of work? I don't, I don't exactly know all the details, but since this is what I did before and everything seemed to be working, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same process again, which that's actually pretty good. Look at that. I torqued it on my own anyway, so that's good. So now it says to back it off and then just do it to four foot pounds. And so I'm gonna go ahead and back it off. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and snug it back up. So I'm guessing that's four, I don't know. I, my torque wrench doesn't go that low. So then the next piece, put the the lock washer on. And so this kind of just keys in here somewhere. There it goes, just like that. And then this one gets screwed on the outside. That's now torqued down. And then we'll just hammer back one of the tabs on this. Okay. And we should be good to go. The Burfield fixed, it's replaced, all back together. Everything seemed to go back together fine. We'll see once I take it for a test drive, we take it out the next time. Hopefully nothing breaks again. Hopefully this will last for a very long time. Marlin Crawler says they have a two year warranty on these. So I'm really hopeful that at least give me another two years to decide what I wanna do with the Jeep next. But for now, it's replaced. I should be ready to go. I really hope that you enjoyed watching me struggle through this process, get covered in grease, make a giant mess, all those great things. Explain a little bit about why I have these axles, why I chose these axles. Um, you know, it's a little unconventional for a Jeep to have Toyota stuff. And I will say it's kind of annoying when you go run with a bunch of Jeep guys and nobody has any parts to help you because you're carrying nothing but Toyota junk. And you know, then you can't really go hang out with the Toyota guys because then you're in a Jeep and they don't like that or whatever. So, you know, I'm kind of just in a state of my own with an old classic Jeep, Toyota axles all hodgepodge together. But I hope you've enjoyed seeing me get this thing repaired, get it back on the road and hopefully get some new videos out at some point with me back on the trail. Until next time.